putting in uh, wiretaps, of putting in uh, microphones, hidden microphones on Mary and Barry to entrap him, to, to do these things in, in, in an effort to find drug dealers and criminals. I think these are really undermining our, civ our civil liberties. And I believe this, the, the techniques that they have used in this case uh, are, are reflexive of uh, the whole system of law enforcement. It's one of the great country. diversionary answers of all time. I mean, we got an lecture on jurisprudence. Let me, let me just say, Al was absolutely right that Janet Reno does deserve credit. I heard from every Looney Tunes on the right telling me if Richard Nixon had had Janet Reno as his attorney general, he'd still be president. Well, it took her exactly 12 hours to broaden that investigation, knowing her president was going in to give a deposition on Saturday. That, that was an act of integrity, an act of independence. Secondly, Ken Starr has not earned the public respect and confidence in any measure that Leon Jaworski earned or Archibald Cox earned. It's, it, his conduct has just had not Neither been Neither one comparable. of whom was subject to the unrelenting savage attacks that Ken Straw has been subject Ken, to. Ken, from, the they didn't take from people three and like and James years, Scoville. They didn't take three and a half years and spend $30 million Richard on a case Nixon's they couldn't yes. make. Richard yeah. Nixon didn't have a James Carville constantly savaging on his oh, behalf. Okay. Anybody who was investigating. Can I, can Wait. I, can I give a little, a little yes, fact, okay. factual, really? First place, Archibald Cox was hardly an objective, even-handed person. He was a Kennedy Democrat, a strong liberal. He hated Nixon. Secondly, Kate, he was being savage. He was being savage by the Nixon White House continuously. The whole system of having political opponents in as prosecutors of an incumbent president is something uh, that is a legal, a criminalization of politics. And it's something we got to worry about in this independent country. Council is a, is a major problem, absolutely. He's, he's not an independent council. He's a partisan council. Think how much better off we would all be if Robert Fisk were still in. You can find, you can find people without a political uh, axe to grind. Well, a lot of people thought he had an axe to grind. I didn't, I, don't, I didn't hear that, Bob, except by people oh, who were afraid he'd be fair. Well, that he'd be too, to be, that he'd too bad. See, that is the whole problem. That's the discussion we're in. He was a Republican. It is, it, the, 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 the system that we cannot trust, the Justice Department, and we have to have these, these extra people, I think, uh, does, does erode public confidence in the whole system? If you could always right. assure me that a president would appoint an attorney general like Janet Reno, whether you like her or not, she she is independent. I'm not I'm not saying she's the best attorney general, but she is independent. She's got integrity. If you could always guarantee that, then there might not be a need for an independent counsel. Unfortunately, given history, we can't guarantee that. See, and now you have a person whose incentive is to he's only successful if he indicts. That's the that is the the challenge. If we had someone appointed like, you know, a GAO person or somebody who's just appointed Maybe every president should get his own counsel uh, that's, uh, uh, when he comes in, but doesn't have a mandate of success, which is you must indict this person. Maybe after because this. Ken Starr wanted to use this post as a stepping stone. And that, that was his desire in the very beginning, and I think that's why he was a bad how appointment. Foolish, how foolish. He was bound to come up under the kind of attacks he's come under. It, it, it's a, it takes for it, a very I poor stepping stone foolish. any place. I I, it in answer foolish. to your initial question, I don't think public would have had confidence in this Justice Department investigating charges such as this, but, which is not to say that independent counsel is the neat answer, but I don't think they would have had but confidence maybe, in this Justice Maybe when this is over, uh, whatever happens, that uh, and this statute comes up for renewal, it will not be renewed, and we can handle situations like this with the appointment of a special counsel and not have a statutory mechanism. Last word from Professor Novak, this special hour-long edition of Capital Gain will be back to look at what this scandal means to the Democratic Party and to the Republicans. Hey, look! Got an energy spike. Hold on! Launch. No! Bombing the Narn back to the Stone Age wasn't enough for you? Then we heard it. The sound of something terrible being born. This is mad. Station 3 to Commander Ivanova. The Centauri have launched a full-scale assault. The time has come and gone! It's our turn now! Two million tons of spinning metal, all alone in the night. A world where empires rise and fall, where dreams are born and die. Where war and hatred are challenged by love and faith. In the third age of mankind, an age plagued by an evil empire that seeks to destroy humanity. It is our last, best hope for peace, for victory, for freedom. It is Babylon 5. Watch Babylon 5, weekdays at 
with 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Exclusively on TNT. Your Honor, if it pleases the court, I'd like to present It some pleases the court to declare a recess. It happens every day. At the same time. The wheels of justice grind to a halt. For the most lively look at the legal profession. On television. Yes, Burden of proof. With Roger Cossack and Greta Van Susteren. It's a court date you wouldn't want to miss. On CNN. Turn to CNN Headline News anytime for a fast-paced 30-minute update of the world. National and international news from CNN. Weather, business and financial updates, sports, entertainment and style. News when you want it. News on demand 24 hours a day. Tune in anytime. That's the Headline News Guarantee. A whole day's news in a half hour. Guaranteed. Today on CNN. At 4, catch up on the latest news, sports, and weather on CNN Sunday. Then at 4.30, meet the businessmen and women who have made it to the top on Pinnacle. At 5, it's world and national news live from CNN in Washington and Atlanta. And at 5.30, explore the issues confronting America with Jesse Jackson. That's all coming up today, Sunday, on CNN. Join Donna Kelly and Leon Harris for the first news of the morning. Early edition, 7 Eastern, weekdays on CNN. Get all the action. Get all the thrills. Get NHL Center Ice on Prime Star. Order the special holiday package of NHL Center Ice on Prime Star and get everything for just $99. Plus, we're going to give you even more. You'll also get number 99. With your paid special holiday package of NHL Center Ice, we'll send you Gretzky, the great one, and the next ones, a breathtaking new NHL video. It's a $14.98 value, but we're giving it to you absolutely free. Your NHL Center Ice package is only $99, payable in three easy installments of $33 each. See hundreds of games, including some of the best Canadian matchups on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. NHL Center Ice on Prime Star is the best way for you to enjoy the NHL. And it's coming to you on Prime Star, the best value in satellite TV. Order NHL Center Ice on Prime Star for only $99 and get the Gretzky video for free. To order, call 1 800 Prime Star. Welcome back to this special hour-long edition of Capital Gang. Behind the scenes, both Democratic and Republican politicians ponder the impact of all these allegations on the 1998 election and beyond. Cato Byrne, does this look like a Republican windfall and a Democratic catastrophe? Well, at a, at a bare minimum, uh, Mark, the president is, uh, is severely hurt politically. And uh, it strikes me the Democrats' fear will be that if Clinton is is badly wounded, they're the ones who are going to hemorrhage. Unlike Bill Clinton, of course, they're running uh, for re-election, of course, the whole House and, and a third of the Senate in November. So they stand the, uh, they uh, run the risk of paying the political price if Bill Clinton himself is severely wounded, and that has to be a primary concern of theirs. On the Republican part, if again, at a minimum, Bill Clinton is so wounded, he's less effective, uh, which he has been of late, advancing an agenda, it's even more important for the Republicans to be able to step in to whatever kind of paralysis there is at the White House and advance their own. But uh, is, and isn't Kate almost mm. suggesting here, Bob, that uh, if, she, if he's hurt, if the president is hurt badly, it's in the Democrats' interest, self-interest, to get rid of him and the Republican self-interest to keep him? There's no, there's no question about it. I have talked to, of course, Republicans are studiously being silent on this. We had Trent Lott on on uh, television today, it was very pious, what a terrible thing it was, uh, that, which is a smart thing, smart thing to do. But privately, Republicans are saying, my goodness, we've got to keep Clinton in here for the rest of this, of this term. The, uh, it, it, it won't, if he, if he is, uh, if he is, if he resigns or is forced out, it's going to be bad. 
uh, for the Democrats, but it would be much worse, they think, if he stays in. The thing that worries me about the Republicans is that uh, they've kind of lost their way as to, as to issues and what they stand for. And uh, with this gift given to them, I think that they'll say, boy, we don't have to do anything, as the uh, Democrats didn't have to do anything in 1974 to have a big win. I'm not sure it's such a gift. They, they have not been able to benefit from scandal. People don't like it when they use scandal. And in fact, if there's a vacuum caused by this, they're actually going to have to come up with an agenda. Other, uh, other than Bob, tax cuts. You know, they might have what to actually have, you know, there's nothing more in life for some of us, but uh, others, you know, would expect them to actually uh, do something, and uh, that could be a problem for them. Of course, uh, uh, Democrats, uh, I think, they, they, they have to run away. They have I mean, a big agenda, they, Margaret. You know, they, I mean, you they, may they, not realize it, but the, if they follow it, they have a huge agenda. Republicans yeah. have no, they have not said a thing about the budget surplus except tax cuts. That's enough. That's an agenda. <laughs> right. Yeah. Alan, 1974, yeah. Novak is right. The, the Republicans the, the, were wiped out, and the Democrats were just said, we're not the Republicans. Well, I, you know, I don't quite agree. Okay. Uh, I covered that election, and I, because I tell you what they did. The Democrats basically played off of that scandal. Yeah. And they came up with things like campaign finance reform, open government, we'll never do. I mean, all, all of which okay. at that point was, was perfect for that environment. Uh, I said last night on this show that I thought, I agree with Bob, this could be, if it was prolonged, it could be like 74. I've changed my mind less than 24 hours because I'm trying to think, how can the Republicans play off of this? Uh, mind you, I think it's going to be a good year for the Republicans or it's going to be a bad year for the Democrats, but how do you play off of this? I mean, you vouch that you're, you know, not going to have sex in your office, uh, you know, you're not going to, you know, I don't think there's any natural to play off of yeah. I think, I think it will, if it, if it is protracted, uh, I agree with what I think Kate suggested, if it's protracted, it's currently going to help the Republicans, but I don't think it's going to be a wipeout. Okay, I, I, let me just make one quick point. That, that is, what we're talking about now is not a legal decision. We're talking about Republicans and Democrats making judgments on an enormous constitutional decision based upon political self-interest. And that's, that's really the reality and the last word. Next on Capital Gang, impeachment, resignation, or survival. perjury, I think tampering with a witness, obstructing justice, uh, might well be considered impeachable offenses, but uh, a matter of having sex in the White House, uh, uh, I don't think so. It's not as much what the president is accused of doing, it's the obstruction of justice that I find as a former uh, federal prosecutor is the most fearful part of the discussions we're having on this. The new CNN USA Today Gallup poll shows that while most Americans do not believe the president, 71%, an overwhelming majority, think the country would be better off if he remained in office. Bob Novak, what are President Clinton's prospects for survival today? Well, the conventional wisdom around this city and people shooting off their mouths on television today is that he's gone, he's finished. Uh, I am not so sure of that. And for one thing, I don't think the American people very quickly uh, acquiesce in a change of presidents. This is a huge uh, 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 development in this country. I don't think any president has ever been or ever will be removed from office for a sexual uh, mistake. Uh, so we get down to the question, I, I, mean, I shouldn't say mistake, a sexual uh, offense. Uh, so we get down to the question of uh, subornation of perjury. I don't think the federal prisons are filled with uh, uh, perjury suborners. Is that the right word, suborners? Uh, I, I think it's a very odd thing to prove. So I think uh, the president may be highly weakened, but if he wants to stay in office, and I would bet he desperately wants to stay in office, I don't think he's going to be rushing out. Margaret Carlson, Richard Nixon's bill of particulars of impeachment were extensive. I mean, it was obstruction of justice. It was virtually an abrogation of the Bill of Rights. Is it, is it possible that we'd have a bill of impeachment based upon uh, a sexual offense and uh, lying in a deposition in a civil case? Impeachment on the basis of, of sex strikes me as something that uh, even the Republicans who and, or, and, and great haters just don't want to have happen. It, 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 that's not going to happen. I really think it's more a question of resignation. But today, one of the um, people like us asked the question of uh, William Ginsburg. Uh, 
How does it feel to be representing Monica Lewinsky, who has the fate of the presidency in her hands? And I sat up straight. It's like a bucket of cold water. Should Monica Lewinsky have the fate of the president in her hands? I, I don't think the American people think so. I think they think we're a little crazy. When you read the polls, um, you know, that, that comes through. If, if there's a, a perjury or an obstruction of justice, that, that's a much more complicated thing. But let me say this. I do think that the underlying thing needs to be more, um, it, it needs to be a Nixon-like abuse of office and perhaps not sex. Now, the humiliation and the disgrace could force the president to resign just because who could take the kind of humiliation that could be around the corner for him? We always talk about outside the beltway, inside the beltway. We're talking about 71% of the American people saying uh, that uh, they don't think the president should resign the office or leave the office or be impeached. Now, I mean, what, what, what's going on here in Washington that, that uh, Bob's, I think, right, this rush to judgment? Well, I, I think a Washington audience uh, believes the allegations and believes that the president was less than truthful last week. So they are assuming, a Washington audience, insiders are assuming that the, the sexual relationship is going to be proven or admitted to. Now, the public hasn't caught up with that. We all do the obligatory, if true, the following things will happen. The public, very fair-minded, is still actually thinking there's a chance this might not be true. And I think we in Washington are way ahead of them in that respect. And, I disagree to the inartful question about Monica Walensky. The fate of the presidency is in Bill Clinton's hands and always has been, as has the well-being of the presidency. Anything that happens is going to be squarely the responsible, responsibility of Bill Clinton. And I think all inspectors 100 percent right. We're not talking impeachment. If you reason back from impeachment, as all inspector rightly points out, you need broad bipartisan support. You need a two-thirds vote in the Senate. If things were that bad, his own party would have persuaded him they will force him to do the right thing, to spare the country the spectacle of an impeachment trial, much as James Buckley in 1974 announced as a loyal member of Richard Nixon's party, the president has lost the moral authority to lead. People will be wondering when it comes to that, is there a Democratic Jim Buckley who's willing to step up to the plate and tell their own guy what has to happen? You know, uh, Mark, if you ever could prove suborning perjury uh, or you could prove obstruction of justice, then I think there would be a serious effort at impeachment. I think that is highly unlikely. And I think most people who've looked at this case think it's highly unlikely. Uh, however, I think Kate is also correct that most people assume that there was a sexual relationship of some sort, however you define that. Henry Hyde said in that clip you had a moment ago that that's not enough that's to impeach. So I think But who wanted resignation, he added. Well, no, 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 but, no, 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 Kate but, thinks that the American right, people me, don't assume that. Let me, let me just finish, if I may, because, because I, I think that's what we're going to end up with in this case, and I don't think we're going to impeach a president because of that. Moreover, if you look at the case of, I mean, I, I, would, I would defer to my two uh, legal experts here, but I think it's, it's accurate to say there's hardly a prosecutor in the country who has prosecuted anyone for perjury in a civil deposition. That just doesn't happen. So I don't think it's going to be an impeachable offense, but I do think that it is going to become the question of the president's moral standing. Can the president govern? Does he become so weak? And if, if this thing uh, keeps let going, me, let me then just I make, let, let me make something that may may induce him to, to, to resign. I, I said last night, I still think the last thing he wants to do right. is resign. He's a very tough guy. But let me, let me say this, that his national security people have been meeting all week to make a, which I think is a catastrophic decision to attack and bomb Iraq. I think it is just crazy for our long-term interest in the, in the Persian Gulf. But the question is, can, does he have the moral authority to put uh, American fighting men and women in harm's way. And does he begin to say, if I can't make that decision, should I stay in this job? I think that's the problem. Our poll shows a, co a couple things there. One is that people generally think he's doing a good job as president, and I think in his presidential duties that's fine. The other thing is they, they assume that the charges are true, these people who still support him. So uh, I don't think they're that far behind us. And because we knew it before and voted him in, I think in, 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 like in part. Uh, no. They, and they could, last, last time with Jennifer Flowers, they could choose not to believe it. This time, they're not being permitted to choose not to believe it. Last word, Kate O'Byrne. The gang will be back in this hour-long special to explore the legacy of William Jefferson Clinton. and credibility are under fire as accusations of perjury and adultery hit the White House. The latest on the story on Impact at a new time tonight, 10 Eastern on CNN.
Welcome back to this special hour-long edition of Capital Gang. William Jefferson Clinton is said to be deeply concerned about his legacy. Al Hunt, is this legacy now hopelessly tainted? Mark, uh, you know, Richard Nixon spent 20 years trying to, uh, trying to refurbish, restore uh, his legacy, and the eminent historian Stephen Ambrose said no matter what he did, that the first line of the old bit always gonna, was going to be Richard Nixon, the first president, forced to resign. If Bill Clinton has to resign, no matter what he does, and no matter what he has done, the first line of the old bit will be William Jefferson Clinton, the second president, forced to resign. If he is able to somehow escape this, there will be some reference in that obituary to Harry Houdini somewhere in the first three or four paragraphs. Makes sense, doesn't it, Margaret? Well, he was searching for a legacy before. Uh, and now uh, it's, it's going to be much harder because we're so preoccupied and because he's, he's got to be hobbled, even though he can keep these things in a box. Here he has a State of the Union to prepare, and no one, no one could concentrate. Um, the, one of the legacies, I'm afraid, is that there's a legal precedent set that an independent counsel can do anything. Uh, wiretap a president, and I think that, that, uh, that that's a very bad legacy to leave. And yes, he did bring it partly on himself, but we also have a system that has gone so crazy that it can happen. They're allowed to do it. Kate O'Byrne, what is the most positive legacy of Bill Clinton? The economy? Oh, no, a, a positive legacy of Bill Clinton's. Uh, if he resigns in, in disgrace or hangs in there despite the fact that he should have resigned in disgrace it strikes me a positive legacy will be a uh, more sober nation will realize character counts you know the drumbeat has been as long as the economy's good and as long as he's pushing popular initiatives the public supposedly decided that character doesn't matter and i have always disagreed with that hoped it wasn't so and i submit given this humiliating spectacle the public would once again decide character of course matters and leaders have a, leadership has a moral dimension. I don't that's think important. that's what Mark meant. By that's that. a positive <laughs> legacy. I think that would be a positive. If I was going, can, you, can you do a positive yeah, legacy? If I was going to say something uh, nice about a president I've criticized, is that I would say that from my standpoint, the standpoint of the majority of Americans, he did very little harm. He did very little harm to the economy. He could have increased taxes even more than he did. He could have had government even bigger than it was. I think it would have been better off if they had less taxes and less government. But it was a, with a Republican Congress and uh, coming in and, and halfway through his, uh, his term, his first term, I think he did as little harm as possible. The historical legacy, win or lose, stay in there or not, is that he is the first president whose sexual misadventures have been chronicled in real time and not after he was oh, gone. Oh, Bob, we can do a lot better than that. I'm sorry. I mean, he was a president who presided over a terrific economy. He deserves credit for that. There's no question of that. Uh, that 1993, the first thing he did in 1993 when he went and he very fairly, uh, you know, raised taxes while cutting taxes for you most Americans. No, cut taxes for most Americans. He raised taxes mm -hmm. for you and your country club friends. Uh, he also, uh, I think, deserves credit for trying to bring the Democratic Party back to the middle. Uh, and I think he has, has done that with some success. So I think there's a... There's a Let me a just change. say, $292 billion deficit when he came in absolutely gone, right. created more jobs at a faster rate than any Republican president in 75 years since Bob's Calvin Coolidge. He didn't create yes. one job. The American economy under his stewardship faster than the American economy under Ronald Reagan's or George Bush's or Dick Nixon's or anybody else. A rather remarkable economic record, a balanced budget, a line item veto, Bob, welfare reform. What more do you and your people want? The Gang of Fire will be back with some closing thoughts. Today, people of all ages are out there doing, refusing to give in to the aches and pains of life because of an advanced medicine called Advil. The relief is glorious. Advil works fast, right at the site of arthritis pain, stopping it where it starts. Arthritis to muscle aches to headaches. Advil relieves all kinds of pain. Advil simply lets people do what they love to do. When was the last time someone remembered your name, your preference for wine, or that you like your sea bass blackened and your prime rib rare? When was the last time the only difficult choice was steel drums or string quartet? And when was the last time you celebrated all night just because it's Tuesday? Holland America Line. It's time. 
Once, in parts of this country, the problem wasn't getting good health care, but getting any at all. Fortunately, the doctors of the American Medical Women's Association have always gone the extra mile for people's health. Now, out of concern for yours, they've granted their acceptance to supplements. These, from Nature Made. Nature Made is proud to bring you the first supplements to earn the acceptance of the AMWA. Nature Made, trusted by the ones you trust. No beauty tips. No rock stars. No well, couch chit chat. Well. We'll be right back. <laughs> CNN has what you're looking for because CNN has more news in the morning with frequent weather updates, more sports and business reports. So get off the couch <laughs> and switch to early edition weekdays, 7 Eastern on CNN. Kate O'Byrne, the question is, what will the mood be when the president enters the chamber of the House of Representatives on Tuesday night? This is what his reception looked like last year. Kate? I think it's safe to say it will be subdued. Uh, both sides of the aisle, I think, will be a little nervous. The Republicans will be self-consciously respectful of the office. Um, the Democrats, I think, will be nervous of showing too much support under the circumstances. It'll be very subdued for the president's part. He might want to hug every third person down the aisle in order to, in order to underscore, to <clears throat> in order to underscore, <laughs> see, I hug everybody, it doesn't mean anything. It's going to be very peculiar, but respectful. Okay, I'd predict that Democrats from safe districts will be crowding in to give him a pat on the back and shake hands and all the rest of it. What's your own sense? I don't think so. I think it's going to be very restrained. I don't think he's going to be doing much hugging. I don't think there's going to be much hugging back. And since I'm a very positive person who always likes to look for good things, I think we may have a return to the more uh, decorous uh, State of the Union atmospheres of my early days in Washington where you didn't have all this screaming and jumping up and, and uh, uh, cheerleading and uh, pep rally tactics. Uh, be, be, be subdued. It all began with the Giffords getting people out of the gallery, right? Now, Kate, the guessing Margaret. game of who's going to be in the gallery was started with Ronald Reagan. We remember one State of the Union when Newt Gingrich and Dick Armey were making faces at each other that was caught at different things. He said, very disrespectful. Uh, I think there will be moments, because we're all making jokes, whenever there's the slightest pun that can be made, if he says any words that are, you know, the camera will be trying to catch that, uh, less gripping and grabbing and quite subdued. The Republicans will be polite. Uh, the Democrats, other than those from safe districts, will be tepid, and everybody will be sneaking to look up at Hillary to see what her reaction is. Last word, Al Hunt. That's all the time we have tonight. Tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern, Impact will devote the entire hour to extensive coverage of the Clinton investigation. This is Mark Shields saying good night and good luck. Capital. Day.